I've tried to record this four times now, considering the subject that I want to talk about, perfectionism. Over the course of my life, quite a few times people have told me that me being a perfectionist is quite a good thing, actually. And now I'm realising that that was a lie. <laughs> I am of the opinion that perfectionism is not necessarily a good thing. I found a study that actually proves that perfectionism is going up over time. It's a video about perfection and my hair is not perfect. It was planned. The study says that all of this is actually quite unsurprising, considering that we live in a society that discourages cooperation, encourages competition, and on top of all of that, it ties our self-worth to our professional achievement. Sounds a bit like... like capitalism, again. Oh. They go on to say that socially prescribed perfectionism is possibly the most debilitating of all different kinds of perfectionism because there is more than one kind, it's a whole thing. Socially prescribed perfectionism is this feeling of constant fear that suddenly everyone around you is going to discover that you made a mistake. It makes you extremely sensitive to any kind of criticism or failure. Our society makes us very anxious. Socially anxious human beings walking around terrified of each other. Everything is about success and and we see our chances at succeeding being negatively impacted by any mistake that we make. Leads to a crushing fear of mistakes and never being good enough. Anyone could make it, but not everyone will make it. While thinking about all of this, I stumbled across an article about capitalism and it's just... It really is something else. One of the most frequent shortcomings of capitalism cited by critics is inequality. Those at the top of the economic ladder have so much more than those at the bottom. In one sense, the prominence of inequality as an issue is a credit to capitalism's success. The prominence of inequality as an issue is a credit to capitalism's success. Capitalism is the most successful welfare system the world has ever seen and it has been especially beneficial to those at the bottom of the income distribution. Inequality is not an issue I care about from a personal standpoint. I just, I, <laughs> how are you supposed to properly analyse inequality if you yourself admit that inequality is not an issue that you care about from a personal standpoint? Very logical. When you mix all of this up, with how competitive everything's become, it is absolutely no wonder that human beings are balls of anxiety and stress. Just a mess. And I realise that this video doesn't sound very optimistic right now. There is optimism. There, there always is optimism. I guess what reassures me about all of this is that perfectionism is not my fault. It isn't something that I'm doing to myself. It partially, at least, comes from the outside, and I'd argue that actually quite a lot of it comes from the outside. It makes it quite a bit easier to deal with all these intrusive perfectionist thoughts when I realise that this is something that a lot of people deal with because of the way that things are set up. It's also argued in the article that perfectionism is linked to depression, suicidal thoughts, eating disorders, anxiety. I would, I would like to confirm that from my experience. The fact that society makes us feel this way and that the way that it makes us feel just doesn't feel very good is proof that there would be a better alternative. The current system is pretty much proven to be extremely stressful psychologically for us as living beings. Being constantly stressed out is just not a very good way to live. What would a less stressful society look like? I'm not saying we have to do away with competition completely. It can be pretty fun to play a video game and compete with people. But when you tie your self-worth to your place in that video game or in that society, it generally isn't very healthy. In this kind of environment, it's really hard to tell the difference between healthy standards and unhealthy perfectionism. I see this in my work all the time. Am I putting healthy standards upon myself to make good content? Or am I setting unreasonable expectations for myself and is it holding me back? Recently, one way that I've tried to deal with this is by asking myself, would I hold a close friend to the same standards that I'm currently holding myself to? If the answer is no, then I try and take a step back and think about it for a bit. But when it comes to social perfectionism, it can get a lot messier ethically and morally. We have to have some standards, otherwise our ethics and values have no meaning whatsoever. What 
is right and standards and when is too much and uh, I've realised that sometimes the healthiest response is to just step back, try and be constructive in a way that does not involve social media. It's difficult to imagine alternatives to anything when we're too wrapped up in how things are. I've noticed this in my creative work too. I get so wrapped up in what my videos should look like that I don't make the videos that I kind of want to be making. So I do think this social perfectionism is also tied to creativity in that way. It's just that the standards that you're putting on yourself are tied to what you think other people will see in your work. I get so wrapped up in high standards for myself that I don't realise that those standards aren't actually helping me. Creativity, joy, inspiration and even productivity are stunted when perfection is the only option. Ironically, according to Flett and colleagues, successful people are actually less likely to be perfectionists, as the symptoms of perfectionism are more likely to thwart higher levels of success one might achieve. <laughs> It's totally counterproductive. This idea of socially prescribed perfectionism is really interesting. It's something that I feel all the time. I'm constantly worried about what other people will think of me or my work and what I do, uh, but also because it's tied to the way that our society works. The fact that it comes from outside of myself reassures me. It's not all my fault. It's not all your fault. And it also makes sense that this social kind of perfectionism is so much more difficult to deal with than the others, because it's tied to wanting to be accepted, wanting to be cared for, wanting friends, wanting a social group. And just like the other kinds of perfectionism, it is extremely counterproductive. Me making this video is a bit weird because it isn't really following the same pattern that my other videos did, in the sense that I didn't really plan it as much and I'm recording with the front facing camera of my phone at midnight. This has led me to record me speaking into a camera four times over the weekend and here I am doing it again because it wasn't good enough and now I'm realising how meta this whole thing is and oh god. I need to start reminding myself that even if what I do or who I am is not perfect, other people can still find value in it. Because it's true, you don't have to be perfect. And even though sometimes we feel that way, it's just not the case. I had a haircut, not really sure where I'm going with that. I post updates and other cool stuff on Patreon. Special thanks to K, LPQ Silver, Mountain Shadow, Nancy T, Nellis and Reasonably Agitated Honeybee. I'd also like to thank Alan, Andy, Anna, Anne, Emma, Kaylin Conrad, Caroline Smith, Cassie, C. Bowie, Chris Lockwood, D.A. Sandwich Guy, Fred Cyan, Callie, Magical Boy, Osayan, Rob, Sarah Zadig, and Strong Jess. I don't know, I might revamp the Patreon tears and read more names out at the end of my videos. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.